greetings from the Kenyan teacher one more time we present salts a simplified version which we believe will go a long way in helping our students answer questions from this topic so before we begin we have some useful information that a student needs to know about the topic so the first thing that a student needs to know is when we talk about salts or when we talk about a salt what do we mean that is meaning of a salt two a student should also know the various types of salts that we have including examples of each type thirdly we have laboratory preparation of salts the various methods available and how to describe the procedures for each method four we have effects of exposure to atmosphere on salts and finally a student should know a few uses of salts this video is going to be dedicated to laboratory preparation of salts join us and be with us until the end of the video on laboratory preparation of salts we are telling our learners that so many methods are available but the method chosen depends on one very important factor and that is solubility of the salt in water before a student can choose on the most appropriate method the first question that would come to the mind of a student is is the salt i'm preparing is it soluble or insoluble it is after that that we are now able to design a suitable method that can be used to prepare a salt so this solubility of salts is governed by what we call solubility rules and we start by presenting the five solubility rules of salts that are there the first rule states that any salt that is a nitrate will dissolve in water two all salts that contain the potassium ion sodium ion and ammonium ion are also soluble thirdly chlorides the group of salts that are called chlorides they are all soluble except that of lead and silver but we say that for lead chloride if you put it in hot water then now it will dissolve moving to sulfates sulfates are soluble as well but we have an exception of barium sulfate and lead sulfate and then we do have a special sulfate of calcium that will dissolve partially or we say it is sparingly soluble and the last rule is about carbonates and all carbonates are insoluble this time round insoluble except those of sodium potassium and ammonia so these are the rules that are going to actually guide our students on which salts are soluble and which ones are insoluble once we have known whether our salt is soluble or not then we can go ahead and design a suitable method of lab preparation having known which salts are soluble we now want to present the several methods available for preparation of soluble salts one of them is 
the action of a dilute acid on a metal. And we know from Form 1 that a dilute acid reacts with a metal to form salt and hydrogen gas. However, before a student chooses on this method, we are saying that reactivity of the metal to be involved must be taken into consideration. Why? This is because some metals react explosively with dilute acids and should not be tried out, while others do not react with dilute acids. Again, this reactivity of metals is governed by what we call the reactivity series, which was discussed in Form 1. So, here we are, the most reactive metal being potassium, and it goes all the way to gold, which is the least reactive. But because uh, gold, silver, and mercury are always not very common in our laboratories, our series usually stop at copper. Then again, we have two nonmetals here which I'm putting in brackets, carbon, which falls between aluminum and zinc, and hydrogen, which falls between lead and copper. So looking at these series, these very reactive metals on our left should not be reacted with dilute acids. And therefore, if I'm asked to, for example, prepare sodium chloride, I can never propose reaction between sodium and dilute hydrochloric acid. There will be an explosion. Then, if I'm asked to now prepare a sort like copper 2 chloride, again, I cannot propose reaction between copper and dilute hydrochloric acid because copper will not react with that dilute acid. So, our students are safer when dealing with metals that are in the middle of the reactivity series. We call them relatively reactive or moderately reactive metals, the likes of zinc and maybe uh, magnesium. Second method available for preparation of soluble salts is now the action of a dilute acids on a base. And we are saying here that such reactions are called neutralization reactions and bases are in two forms. We have basic oxides, which are actually oxides of metals, and we have the metal hydroxides in that category. So, dilute acid reacting with a base, this time we shall get our salt in solution and some water. Third method for preparation of soluble salts is action of dilute acid on a metal carbonate. And for this reaction, we get three products. That is salt, carbon-4 oxide, and water. And lastly, we have action of a dilute acid on a metal hydrogen carbonate as another method one can use to prepare a soluble salt. This fourth reaction again gives similar products to reaction number three. Having gone through the four available methods that can be used to prepare soluble salts, it is our time to move to the procedure now. And it is what will be tested most of the time. We shall be asked to describe the procedures involved in salt preparation. So here, we are saying that the procedure used in all the above methods depends on whether what is being reacted with the dilute acid is a solid or aqueous solution. So what do we mean here? Metals will come in solid state. Almost any metal you can think of will be in solid. Now, the oxides are also going to be in solid. 
Metal carbonates are also mainly solid. But for metal hydroxides, we have some that are in aqueous solutions. An example is sodium hydroxide or even potassium hydroxide. For carbonates, we have solids. For hydrogen carbonates, just a few are solids and majority of them are in aqueous solutions. So at this point, before we design the most appropriate method to prepare a salt, we also need to consider the nature of the substance that is being reacted with the dilute acid. And the question we're asking is, is it a solid or is it an aqueous solution? So if the substance we are reacting with a dilute acid is a solid, and we have advised here that the solids here may include metals, metal oxides, and maybe metal carbonates. So, if you are reacting a dilute acid with a solid, then no matter the salt being prepared, these are always our general procedures, which we are simplifying for our students to apply in all situations where they are proposing a method of preparing a salt to involve a dilute acid and a solid. So the first procedure we shall add excess solid, of course you will give us the name of the solid, to the acid in a beaker. This can be substituted for adding the solid to the acid until effervescence stops. So when effervescence stops, it means we shall have some excess solid and reacted. Two, we do filter to remove this excess solid and obtain your salt as filtrate. Three, we evaporate this filtrate to saturation. Then we cool the hot saturated solution for crystals to form. This would earn all the marks for descriptive questions that ask us to describe the procedure for preparation of the same. Now, some questions ask us to make pure crystals. So that is when we shall include the last procedure where we dry the crystals between filter paper. Students, don't forget that the solid will have to be named according to the salt being prepared and the acid must also have a name depending on what we are preparing. For example, if I'm preparing magnesium chloride, I'll have to talk about adding excess magnesium ribbon to dilute hydrochloric acid in a beaker. We have to be particular with the name of the solid and the name of the acid to be used. What if we are reacting a dilute acid with another substance that is not a solid but is also a solution? So here, the only issue is it will be impossible for us to tell the point at which the acid is completely used up. So what do we do in such cases? In such cases, we carry out a titration experiment where a suitable indicator is used to show us the end point or the equivalence point. So in titration, the most important apparatus used is the pipette and the burette. And of course, we need conical flask, we need a retort stand, we need a white tile, and many other small apparatus like maybe pipette fillers and others. Up to that point, we are through with suggestions on how to handle soluble salts, in which case there are two situations 
one involving a dilute acid and a solid, and another one involving two liquids. We now move on to preparation of insoluble salts, and we are saying that two methods are used. One is called direct combination or synthesis. So here, two substances, one containing the cation in the salt and the other containing the anion are reacted together directly. So this method can be used to prepare even soluble salts. For example, if I need to prepare ion 2 sulfide, I can take ion metal which contains the cation in my salt and then I mix it with sulfur which contains the anion in my salt. These I heat together and I'll be able to get my salt. The method is then called direct combination or synthesis. Method 2 is the most common and we call it ionic precipitation or double decomposition. In ionic precipitation, two soluble salts, this time one salt, one soluble solution contain the cation in the salt and the other contain the anion. These are mixed together. We are telling our students that choice of these solutions should not be an issue. For example, for the cation, quickly metal nitrate will be an easy choice. While for the anion, sorry, for the anion, any salt of potassium, sodium, and ammonium does the trick. For example, if I'm asked to prepare copper 2 carbonate, I need two soluble salts, one containing copper, and we have said don't think far, just go for the copper 2 nitrate. It will be a soluble salt that contains copper ions. Then for the anion carbonate, pick any between potassium carbonate, sodium carbonate, or ammonium carbonate. So for this case, we can mix sodium carbonate with copper 2 nitrate. Then when you mix them, your insoluble salt copper 2 carbonate will easily be precipitated out. And now, before we end the video, let's have a look at past KCAC questions on the topic salts. So we are presenting three questions. Question one will involve preparation of a salt using a dilute acid and a solid. Question two will involve preparing a soluble salt using a dilute acid and a soluble hydrogen carbonate. And lastly, question three will involve preparing an insoluble salt. Continue being with us as we explore this past KCSE question papers and giving the expected responses that would maximize the score of a candidate. So question one is borrowed from the year 2008, chemistry paper one, question number 16. It asked us that starting with copper metal, describe how crystals of copper 2 chloride may be prepared in the laboratory. So here, what should come to the mind of a student is, I cannot react copper directly with dilute hydrochloric acid because from the reactivity series, copper will never react with dilute hydrochloric acid. So the first procedure was to heat the copper metal, heat the copper metal in air to obtain copper 2 oxide. Then two, we are supposed to add excess, just as we agreed on our general procedures, add excess copper 2 oxide to now dilute hydrochloric acid. 
from there we will filter to remove excess copper 2 oxide once we have done this we should then evaporate the filtrate to saturation and after this we are supposed to cool to obtain crystals of your salt which is copper 2 chloride we are not asked to obtain pure crystals so a student could stop here but if we are asked to obtain pure crystals we would continue that dry the crystals you then dry the crystals between filter papers this kind of procedure will afford the learner or the candidate full marks just as we have agreed in our discussion so we proceed to question number two which involved preparing a soluble salt but this time round using two solutions and this is the year 2018 chemistry paper one question number 15 so we are told you are provided with aqueous potassium hydrogen carbonate describe how a solid sample of potassium nitrate can be prepared so we have aqueous potassium hydrogen carbonate but we need nitrate which we shall get from dilute nitric acid dilute nitric acid is a solution the potassium hydrogen carbonate is also a solution so in this case we have to carry out titration experiment so the examiner expected the learner to present the answer as follows pipette 25 cubic centimeter of because the answer is the answer is a bit long we shall use symbols to save on space so pipette 25 cubic centimeter of the potassium hydrogen carbonate into a conical flask after this we are supposed to add three drops of let's use methyl orange indicator from there we will be forced to fill now a burette fill a burette with dilute nitric 5 acid again we are using symbols to present that after the, you have done the two procedures we will add the dilute nitric 5 acid from the burette from the burette until the color of the indicator just changes of course we are adding it to our conical flask eh? after this we are supposed to note the volume of dilute nitric 5 acid used then we are supposed to repeat the experiment we are supposed to repeat the experiment of course using the volumes of the two substances so i'm going to note this volume of uh, dilute uh, nitric 5 acid and i used 25 for the potassium hydrogen carbonate i'll repeat the experiment using the volumes of the two substances but without without the indicator why because i do not want to contaminate my salt so in the second procedure i don't use an indicator once i get a solution here i will evaporate it so evaporate the resulting solution 
to saturation. And the last step I do is to cool that hot saturated solution for me to be able to obtain uh, the crystals I'm asked to obtain and that is for potassium nitrate. So the answer here is a bit long because a candidate is expected to describe the titration procedure, the titration experiment. And I believe we've done it to the best of our ability. So to the last question, we want now to prepare an insoluble salt. And this is borrowed from the year 2000, chemistry paper one, question number six, which read, starting with copper metal, describe how a solid sample of copper two carbonate can be prepared. The first question we ask is copper two carbonate soluble? you realize it is insoluble. So, I need two solutions, which are soluble, one containing copper, and as we have agreed, let's go for copper 2 nitrate. So, the next question is, how do I get copper 2 nitrate from copper metal? And then for the carbonate, I will simply pick on sodium carbonate. When I mix these two, my insoluble salt gets precipitated. So, for the first part of the answer, I want to get copper 2 nitrate from copper metal. And I believe our students are aware that when I make nitric acid concentrated, then now it can react with copper. So I'll do this. I'll react copper metal with concentrated, concentrated nitric 5 acid to obtain copper 2 nitrate. There is an option of burning or heating the copper metal in air first to get the oxide and then you react the oxide with dilute form of nitric 5 acid. That will still give you copper 2 nitrate. From here, once I obtain my copper 2 nitrate, I will react it I will react it with sodium carbonate. And here we are saying you can use potassium carbonate or even ammonium carbonate to precipitate, to precipitate your insoluble salt of copper 2 carbonate. From here, we are supposed to filter and I'm filtering to obtain my insoluble salt as residue. I will have obtained my salt. So what remains is for me to make it pure by washing it. So I'll wash the residue with distilled water to remove traces of sodium nitrate. So I wash the residue with distilled water and finally I dry between filter papers. Why are we washing with distilled water? This is an insoluble salt. It will never dissolve in water. Students, up to that point, we have presented what we believe is actual salts simplified. We believe it will help you because looking back at our days in high school, this topic wasn't very easy to understand. Wishing you all the best. This is the Kenyan teacher. We ask you to keep it here. Share the link so that your colleagues may also be able to learn with us.